In this lesson, we'll dissect the atom and learn that it is composed of three kinds of subatomic particles. An atom's properties come from the amount of each subatomic particle it contains, and chemists have a special notation to indicate the amounts of these particles. In section 2.1, we discussed atomic theory, which states that everything is made of atoms. But what are atoms made of? That's the topic of today's lesson. But before we begin, I want you to look around you and hold something in your hand. It could be a phone or a pencil, it doesn't matter what. Whatever you're holding, it's mostly empty space. Furthermore, your hand is mostly empty space. You are mostly empty space. An atom is mostly empty space. In the middle of an atom is an extremely dense nucleus, which contains all the mass of the atom. The nucleus is composed of protons and neutrons. Zipping around the outside of the atom are electrons. Although the nucleus contains 99.97% of the mass of the atom, it is tiny. If an atom were expanded to the size of a sports ball stadium, the nucleus would be the size of a blueberry, yet it would weigh as much as the entire stadium. Three subatomic particles make up atoms, electrons, protons, and neutrons. The most important properties of these particles are their electrical charge, their mass, and where they live. Electrons contain a negative one charge, while protons contain a positive one charge. Neutrons are uncharged. Electrons have mass, but it's so small that you can safely ignore it in this course. Protons and neutrons both have a mass of one atomic mass unit, or AMU. Sometimes AMUs are called Daltons out of respect for our boy John D. Electrons are constantly whizzing around the outside of the atom, while protons and neutrons are confined to the nucleus. While it's common to draw the electrons orbiting the nucleus, as I've done here, it's not actually true. Their movements are much more random, which we'll explore in chapter six. It's more accurate to say that electrons exist somewhere within an electron cloud surrounding the nucleus. But for now, you can imagine them orbiting in nice little circles if you'd like. In general, the role of each subatomic particle is as follows. The number of protons determines the atom's element. The number of electrons determines the atom's charge and reactivity. The number of neutrons determines the atom's mass. Neutrons are by far the least important of the subatomic particles. As I mentioned, it's extremely important to the properties of an element how many of each subatomic particle it has. Naturally, chemists have a kind of notation that indicates this information. It is composed of three numbers and a symbol. The letter Z signifies the atomic number, which is how many protons the atom has. The number of protons is unique to the identity of the element, helium, always has two protons. Magnesium always has 12. The letter X symbolizes the atomic symbol of the atom. Each element has a unique symbol. Helium is HE and magnesium is MG. Because each element has a unique number of protons, each atomic symbol can only correspond to one atomic number. So it's common to omit the atomic number since you can find it by looking up the symbol on the periodic table. Chemists write the symbol big and in the middle, so it's obvious which element we're talking about. The charge of the element is written in the upper right corner and always includes a plus or minus. The charge indicates the difference between protons and electrons. So an atom with a two plus charge contains two fewer electrons than protons. Both our example atoms have a two plus charge, but this does not mean that they have the same number of electrons. Helium 2 plus contains no electrons, while magnesium 2 plus contains 10 electrons. However, we would commonly say that they are both missing two electrons. Lastly, the mass number is symbolized by the letter A. The mass number represents the mass of the atom in atomic mass units. Because neutrons and protons each weigh one AMU, the mass number is equal to the sum of the protons and neutrons. You have to do a little math to determine the number of neutrons in an atom given its mass number, but it's not that hard. For example, helium-4 has two protons and two neutrons, bringing its total mass to 4 AMU. 
Okay, time to practice what you learned. Why don't you pause the video and write down how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are in this atom of helium. I'll come back and give you the answer. Well, in this question, the easiest one to figure out is the atomic number or number of protons. Even though it's not written, we always know that helium has two protons or else it's not helium. Next, we'll determine the number of neutrons from its mass number. Since this atom has a mass number of five and contains two protons, it must have three neutrons. Lastly, the charge of the atom is given by protons minus electrons. Since no charge is written for this atom, it has a neutral charge. The number of protons equals the number of electrons, two. To further explore the concept of this lesson, we'll take our helium atom and add two of each subatomic particle, then see how the atom changes. First, let's add two electrons. Adding two electrons to a neutral helium atom gives the atom a negative two charge. Now, electrons move a lot during chemical reaction, so it's very common that elements gain and lose charges. A charged atom is called an ion, and its properties depend on the specific charge that it has. We'll return to this concept in 2.7. If we add two neutrons to an atom, we will increase the atom's mass by two also increasing the atom's mass number. Note that this does not change the type of atom it is, nor will it change the chemical properties of this atom. When two atoms have the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons, we call them isotopes. Isotopes are quite an uninteresting to chemists since all the isotopes of an atom have the same chemical properties, just different masses. Lastly, if we add two protons to an atom, it increases the atom's mass by two and changes the type of element and changes the charge. It is important to note that anytime an atom contains a charge, the charge must be written in the upper right corner. The charges on atoms are critical to their chemistry and they cannot be ignored. 